Hi and welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can see, I have a really big project this time. Uh, this is the Whitewood Abbey Church uh, from Infinite Dimension Games. And they were kind enough to send me the files for this uh, and I printed it and it took about 125 hours to print at uh, 0.2 millimeters layer height, 5% info, two wall counts, um, 50 millimeters per second for you uh, 3D print nerds uh, like me. Um, it has a um, uh, fully detailed interior, as you can see, uh, you have the lovely floors with the uh, really uh, cool inscriptions and uh, stonework here, and uh, I really love this, the way it comes together like this, it's really sturdy, it fits very snugly, uh, and uh, uh, you even uh, install some movable doors uh, in these uh, holes here, uh, you use filament as hinges, it's really smart, and uh, I undercoated this with uh, Mechanica Standard Grey from Games Workshop Spray and some uh, Wolf Grey uh, primer from uh, Army Painter, and uh, that's uh, all I've done so far, and uh, this was, uh, the doors were uh, primed with the uh, fur brown, also Army Painter. And um, I'm gonna start airbrushing now, and then I'm gonna paint the whole damn church. Not the inside this time, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna do the exterior, but uh, that'll have to do for this uh, tutorial. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let's go! For uh, painting large uh, terrain pieces, airbrushing is certainly the way to go, in my opinion. I almost always put down a base coat with the primer sprays uh, as good as I can and then touch up any mistakes with airbrush and then uh, it's really good for shading and highlighting before you go to the dry brushing stage and uh, especially on large pieces where you want to have kind of a difference in textures and shapes and volumes you, you gotta exaggerate these things. Uh, in my opinion, uh, compared to if you see your church in real life. But um, I went over this uh, with the first step with some dark grey uh, uh, Vallejo Air uh, paint and just painted all the uh, places where grime would collect and where you would naturally have some shadows. And if you go outside and you have an old church in your town, you can see that. Um, there's going to be a lot of oxidation or what do you call it, weathering, natural weathering from from just time where you get some grime and dirt collecting in all these corners and uh, the first step is to create this uh, natural shade and dirt layer here. So um, just carefully, as carefully as you can, um, just go over all these uh, places where you think uh, that these uh, shade would look natural and uh, on the roof side did the same thing but with a dark uh, uh, a dark gray blue paint uh, that uh, is kind of similar to the uh, primer that I used for the roofs and it also brings the gray and the blue parts a little bit together because uh, the shades kind of go into each other and um, I kind of um, just go over it uh, with bigger moves from further away. I just try to to hit uh, the parts as uh, as neatly as I can first, and then I go out with the airbrush a little bit and try to hit stuff from further away to create a nice gradient on the shade. Because uh, if you close enough, you're gonna get a kind of a harsh, uh, sharp edge there. So. Uh, do it in layers and I think uh, that's the way to go if you want to have uh, nice gradients is to first hit the, the absolute darkest point and then go outwards uh, with the airbrush to, to get a smooth look here and um, you can always correct your mistakes with airbrush it's pretty easy to go back with a base color and just uh, paint over if you if you didn't get it uh, the way you want it um, for the highlighting, I use uh, actually the 
gray primer from Vallejo Air. It's a really nice, almost white color, but it's a bit off-white, almost gray. Uh, and uh, uh, that's a very nice highlight color to just uh, kind of um, add a uh, uniform highlight to everything, especially if, I mean, if I'm painting red and stuff like that, I won't use this color, but since this is gray and blue-gray, um, the same highlight color can be used uh, for everything just to bring it together and uh, uh, to create some kind of uh, uniform light source. Uh, I mean you have the same light source on all of the church, it's the sun, so um, I want the same kind of highlight color for everything and uh, with the airbrush you get so much transparency from the layers below that you uh, can get away with this. And um, uh, a lot of people might start dry brushing uh, on the highlights directly, but I find uh, you get a much smoother and better result if you start to uh, do the highlights with the airbrush first and then uh, do the sharp edge highlights with, uh, with the dry brush. So here you just uh, do the in inverted <laughs> thing you did with uh, the shading, just hit the high points and uh, just try to blend the shadows and the mid-tones together with this so uh, you can ease up some uh, some of your darkest highlights if you want with this just hit it up from far away and you can kind of lighten the, the whole area you're painting so uh, this is a, kind of a process uh, you have to just look at it and turn it and paint a little bit and then turn it again until you're satisfied you yeah, there's no recipe for it, but uh, when you're done you kind of know <laughs> and uh, Then it's just uh, a big a dry brush with pure white uh, acrylic craft paint that I always use the Liquitex Paints that are really good and have good coverage and nice texture for dry brushing so I just go over everything starting with the roof where I know the there's going to be the hardest uh, light hitting them so I can afford more mistakes there so just uh, get most of the paint on the brush and just dry brush and <laughs> this is the same uh, theory as with the uh, airbrushing you can uh, you can can just start somewhere and go just a little bit at a time and just turn it and just check for uniformity and don't go overboard uh, with one area directly just uh, kind of uh, start little by little and then add more uh, dry brushing as you go and um, kind of just take it easy and do it in steps instead of just going, going heavily in one layer and uh, I usually put the model together uh, after doing parts and then I uh, dry brush everything uh, to get a uniform feel here so I just go over thing once again with the white until I'm happy with it and uh, this is how it looks at this stage and uh, now it's time to detail it and uh, I took out some uh, Citadel uh, shades and uh, uh, used uh, the Seraphim Sepia, the Athonian Camo shade, Agrax Earth shade and uh, uh, Reichland flesh shade I think and I just pick out different bricks here one by one with these shades and uh, create some kind of uh, uh, you Difference in the stonework that like they use different kinds of materials that they found and I find this uh, to bring a lot of interest into the model a lot of texture and uh, It looks so much better. It's uh, Nothing I invented. This is a classic Games Workshop uh, painting style that they used, and I, uh, I really like it. And it's quite easy. It just takes some patience to pick out the stones. But I mean, the washes just work straight out of the pot. You don't have to uh, dilute them. Just don't paint too much on it. And uh, here I just uh, took the lowest parts of the stone here, and I painted all of that in Seraphim Sepia to make it look like they used some kind of. Uh, different heavier stone for the base of the church. I've seen that in a lot of churches in Sweden that they have like uh, a different material in the base and then uh, other stonework uh, higher up. And uh, you just do this until you're happy and add a lot of colors. And uh, 
this is how the church looks after this stage and uh, I uh, painted all the metal parts here with a uh, black Templar contrast paint it's uh, kind of an easy way to paint metal uh, on this uh, this is an old church and if you go around checking out old churches the metal parts aren't metal colored they're usually black uh, black and iron so uh, I paint them with this and uh, it's an easy paint to just uh, correct mistakes with and uh, it gives uh, semi uh, good coverage which is good because you want some highlights and uh, when that's done I just give it a quick dry brush with white again just to uh, make these parts uh, a little bit more uniform with the rest of the church and the dry brush I did before. So I think this uh, brings everything together nicely in the end. The final step here is to uh, apply the Army Painter Quick Shade uh, which I almost always do to all uh, train pieces. It's uh, Create, it creates kind of a varnish uh, surface and a nice shading to everything so um, you get some nice stone detail and the tiles on the roof here gets separated nicely and uh, it uh, it protects it when playing also so uh, it's a really good product um, I dilute it as I said earlier with uh, some white spirits to make it last longer because uh, it might be a little bit too harsh uh, if it's uh, put on straight from the pot not for miniatures, but for terrain pieces, it's, uh, it, it needs to be diluted in my opinion. And uh, after this is done, it dries kind of gloss and uh, I just give it a, a good uh, coat of uh, some varnish. I use uh, Monitorum varnish from Gangs Workshop. It's a satin finish, which is uh, kind of nice. It's not too matte and not too glossy, so it's a good uh, mid uh, finish for for a model I think and uh, I dry brushed the doors with some uh, brown craft paint and uh, I was satisfied with that I went over with a kind of a really beige uh, I think it's very light umber paint and uh, I just do that until I'm happy with um, the wood grain and I give it a wash uh, after that uh, with some uh, Agrax earth shade uh, Gangs Workshop shade here and uh, when it's dry I picked out all the metal parts here with uh, some uh, mixture between gun metal and steel Vallejo air paint um, and I uh, went for actually actually a metal color here on the doors uh, despite having told you a minute ago that metal is black because I wanted to have some different textures and uh, I thought it looked a little bit more interesting so I um, when that was uh, dry I just washed it with uh, some watered down Black Templar uh, contrast paint which is a really nice wash for metal paint I think it's, uh, it's a bit heavier than null oil but uh, it looks good for really old metal and uh, when that was dry the church was actually finished and I put the doors in and uh, this is how it looks when it's finished Hope you like it, I sure do. It's a really nice centerpiece model and uh, it's a great gaming piece, so get it if you can. <laughs>